Not every former cast member of Night Court has returned for the rebooted series. From untimely deaths to actors who gave up showbiz altogether, here's what happened to the show's original cast. In a 1989 interview on NPR, Harry Anderson was blunt about starting his career as a conman magician, running confident street tricks to fool marks out of their cash. After getting his jaw broken by an angry mark, Anderson transformed his street act into a legitimate stage show. He was discovered by Kenny Rogers' manager, who booked him as Rogers' opening act, which led to early roles on Saturday Night Live and Cheers, among others, and eventually his signature role as Judge Harry Stone on Night Court. What the hell was that? While he was still doling out mostly snack-sized doses of justice on Night Court, Anderson was making sure he would be no one-hit wonder. He followed up Night Court with a successful four-year stint as humor columnist Dave Barry on CBS's Dave's World. Along with numerous other gigs over the years, in 2002, he opened his own magic shop in New Orleans, Spade and Archer Curiosities by Appointment. Three years later, he cut the ribbon on his nightclub Oswald's Speakeasy in New Orleans' French Quarter. Unfortunately, Harry Anderson left us far too early. In 2018, Anderson passed away in his sleep. The cause of death was a stroke at 65, complicated by influenza and heart disease. John Larroquette memorably filled in the role of prosecutor on Night Court as Dan Fielding. Despite often being cruel, Dan occasionally reveals surprising depth, such as in Season 3's Wheels of Justice Part 2 when he makes an impassioned argument to Judge Stone to not quit his job. Professionally, Larroquette hasn't slowed down for a second since Night Court. After that show banged its final gavel, Larroquette followed it up with the acclaimed The John Larroquette Show, which lasted three seasons. In a small recurring role, Larroquette was nominated for a total of three Emmy Awards, winning two of them for his portrayal of the brilliant murderer Joey Herrick on The Practice. Along with his film work, he's landed far too many regular recurring and one-off roles to list, including Carl Sack on the dramedy Boston Legal, Jenkins on the fantasy adventure series The Librarians, and Gavin Firth on CBS's The Good Fight. And Larroquette isn't done with Dan Fielding. In late 2020, Variety reported the actor would return to the role for a Night Court revival, news that came to fruition when the sequel series premiered in early 2023. If you want to make sure everyone in your courtroom behaves, Bull is a pretty good guy to have around. Richard Mull plays the bailiff who, at 6 feet 8 inches, towers over just about everyone else in the courtroom and whose shaved head helps to cut an intimidating figure. His ability to easily lift none other than Lou Ferrigno off the ground in Season 2's Battling Bailiff impresses a wrestling promoter enough to offer him a job. But despite how he looks, Bull's just a big softy. Since leaving Night Court behind, Moles made some memorable appearances in films and television over the years. He plays a ghost in the horror parody Scary Movie 2, the mystical drifter in the Nickelodeon series 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd, and the TV supervillain Dementor in the 1996 Christmas comedy Jingle All the Way. I'm gonna deck your halls, bub. Of all of Night Court's characters, perhaps the most consistently level-headed is the court clerk Mac, played by Charles Robinson. Mac can often be found behind the bench, caring for a tall stack of file folders ready to hand off the next case to Judge Stone. Once Night Court was over, Robinson hit the ground running. While he gathered plenty of film credits, most of his work comes from television. After Love and War star John Hancock passed away in 1992, Robinson stepped in as a new regular on the sitcom and was there until the series' penultimate episode in 1995. He also played Bud Harper on the show that made Tim Allen's career home improvement. Robinson never slowed down. One of his later credits is for the timely 2020 freeform miniseries Love in the Time of Corona, about different people trying to make new connections and keep current ones alive in an age of social distancing. In 2021, Charles Robinson passed away at the age of 75 from cardiac arrest as a result of a prolonged battle with cancer. Marky Post was something of a latecomer to Night Court, but it's tough to imagine it without her. While she makes a guest appearance in the show's second season as public defender Christine Sullivan, she didn't become a regular until the third season premiere. The naive and pure-hearted Sullivan is there for the rest of the series, circling Judge Stone as a love interest and dodging Dan Fielding's advances. After Night Court, Post landed the role of liberal news reporter Georgie Ann Lati on the sitcom Hearts of Fire, starring opposite John Ritter as the conservative John Hartman. In the years that followed, she'd work regularly on the big and small screens, including appearing as Cameron Diaz's mom in one of the more painfully memorable scenes of the 1998 comedy There's Something About Mary. Post was diagnosed with cancer in October 2017 and remained professionally active while undergoing treatment. Sadly, she died from the disease in August of 2021 at the age of 70. 
When Night Court begins, Richard Mole's bull Shannon isn't the only bailiff keeping things in order. He's joined by the chain-smoking and wisecracking Selma Hacker, played by Selma Diamond. With the difference in their heights providing a wonderful contrast, Selma and Bull have great comedic chemistry. And Selma acts as a mother figure to the younger Bull. Sadly, Diamond died of lung cancer at the age of 64, two seasons into Night Court's run. Diamond was succeeded by Florence Halep as bailiff Florence Kleiner. Like Selma, Florence provides the mother figure that Bull so desperately needs. In a devastatingly tragic coincidence, Halep, like Diamond, died of lung cancer before the end of Night Court's third season. She was 63 years old. Some fans were concerned about Marsha Warfield when she signed on to play the tough bailiff Roz Russell for Night Court. The tragically similar deaths of her predecessors had some wondering if the show was cursed. Warfield told People in 1988 that she was concerned, but not for her physical safety. She explained to the outlet, "...when I first went on the show, I was a bundle of nerves, and I'm still a bundle of nerves. I'm scared they're going to find out I don't know what I'm doing." Considering her humorous performance as the no-nonsense Roz, she clearly knew more than she thought she did. After the end of Night Court, Warfield did a lot of one-off appearances in series like The John Larroquette Show and Mad About You. Her longest-running post-Night Court role was on the NBC sitcom Empty Nest as physician Maxine Douglas. Warfield's acting credits end in 1999, but she hasn't been sitting on her hands. Warfield has continued to make audiences laugh, but on the stage as a stand-up comic rather than on the screen. For most of Night Court, the court stenographers don't have much time in the spotlight. That changes in the final two seasons with the introduction of the ditzy stenographer Lisette. Played by Jolene Lutz, the naive and clueless Lisette is a friend of Bull Shannon. Lutz has continued to act over the years, though her credits are a little sporadic. She had a recurring role on the General Hospital spinoff Port Charles and enjoyed memorable one-offs on series like Lois and Clark and Pushing Daisies. At the same time, Lutz has been pursuing another passion, zoology. In a 2013 radio interview, Lutz described how she came to volunteer for the Los Angeles Zoo and eventually created its Sex and the City Zoo fundraisers, in which she educates the public about the mating habits of animals. Every good schemer needs a loyal lackey, and for the mischievous prosecutor Dan Fielding, that lackey is the unhoused Phil Sanders, played by William Ute. Phil eventually dies, but Fielding isn't left without a henchman. Phil's wealthy identical twin brother Will, also played by Ute, shows up to pick up his dead brother's slack in Night Court's final season. Both before and after his time with Night Court, Ute had mainly one-shot and recurring appearances on different TV shows, with one major exception. While sitcom fans may know Ute best as the twin brothers doing Fielding's dirty work, followers of daytime drama are much more familiar with the actor in another longer-running role. Since 1985, except for some notably long breaks from the show, Ute has played Dr. Wilhelm Rolf in numerous episodes of NBC's popular soap opera Days of Our Lives. While you may know him as the android Data from Star Trek The Next Generation, before he was serving aboard the Enterprise, Brent Spiner played one of the most hilarious recurring characters on Night Court. Starting with the season 3's two-parter Wheels of Justice, Spiner played Bob Wheeler, a slow-talking yokel whose family keeps being dragged in front of Judge Stone with incredible tales of disaster. His tale in his first appearance is so dark and unbelievable, it stuns Judge Stone into uncharacteristic silence. The judge then calls, Recess. <laughs> Without any more outlandish tales to tell on Night Court, Spiner found his career-defining role of Data on The Next Generation. He also landed memorable roles like the eccentric Area 51 doctor in the Independence Day films, LAPD Captain Ned Vanderhoff in the series Penny Dreadful, City of Angels, and the mysterious preacher Sidney in Outcast. Before Marky Post was added as the regular public defender Christine Sullivan in season 3 of Night Court, Billy Young, played by Ellen Foley, was the attorney clashing with Dan Fielding in the show's second season. Passionate about defending her clients and having a good sense of humor that made for great chemistry with Judge Stone, Billy was the judge's good friend and love interest. That is, until Foley left the show behind to pursue other opportunities in the worlds of acting and music. Foley's biggest claim to fame has nothing to do with Night Court or any other acting role. Foley is the female half of the duet for Meatloaf's 1977 hit single, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, and her vocals have also appeared on albums by acts like Blue Oyster Cult and punk rock legends The Clash. Foley has released solo albums as well, including 2013's About Time. Foley doesn't seem to want to be tied down to any one thing, giving equal time to music and acting. As such, her acting credits are more sporadic. Since leaving Night Court, she's landed roles in major motion pictures like the 1987 thriller Fatal Attraction and 1988's Cocktail. She's also appeared in recurring roles for the daytime drama All My Children. 
In the second season episode, Take My Wife, Please, Mac is reunited with Quan Le Duc. Played by Denise Kumagai, Quan Le is a Vietnamese woman whose family nursed Mac back to health when he was injured during the Vietnam War. Mac agrees to marry Quan Le, who is in America on a temporary visa, so she won't be sent back to Vietnam. While their union is initially a green card marriage, Quan Le harbored feelings for Mac for years, and eventually Mac realizes he shares those feelings. Kumagai's acting credits end in 2006 with her recurring role of Aunt June on the popular dramedy Gilmore Girls. Since then, Kumagai has continued to work on something she helped to create even before she appeared on Night Court. In 1981, Kumagai co-founded the Cold Tofu Improv Team, a Los Angeles-based improv and comedy troupe.